This lecture is on congenital heart disease, patent ductus arteriosus. Ductus arteriosus normally closes by 72 hours after birth. The structure becomes fibrotic later and remains as the ligamentum arteriosus. Endothelium of mature ductus responds to oxygen which acts as the stimulus of constriction when it receives oxygenated blood from the lungs. Premature ductus does not respond to oxygen that well. PDA is much more common in the premature infant than the mature infant. The higher the prematurity, higher the chance of having a PDA. PDA can occur as part of the congenital rubella syndrome. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button. Press the bell icon after that for all updates. PDA demonstrated by an iotogram. The iotogram was obtained after injecting radio contrast dye into the iota using a catheter. Dye is seen entering the pulmonary artery through the PDA from the descending iota. PDA with left right shunt increases pulmonary blood flow, pulmonary venous return and dilatation of left atrium, left ventricle and iota. When there is a large flow, pulmonary arteries are dilated and long standing cases develop severe pulmonary hypertension with flow reversal known as Eisenmenger reaction. PDA connects to the aorta distal to the origin of left subclavian. Hence, reversal of shunt produces desaturation in lower part of the body, leading to differential cyanosis and clubbing. Upper body receives saturated blood from the aorta prior to the right to left shunt and has no cyanosis. Pulse volume is high in PDA because the flow from aorta into the low resistance pulmonary circuit acts as an aortic runoff. Increased load to the left ventricle produces cardiomegaly with left ventricular type of forceful apex beat. The classical murmur in PDA is a continuous murmur which peaks around the second heart sound. It is also known as train in tunnel murmur and Gibson's murmur. The murmur is best heard below the left clavicle in Gibson's area. The train in tunnel character is imparted by the addition of multiple vascular clicks known as eddy sounds due to the highly turbulent flow through the ductus. A continuous thrill is often associated. The diastolic component of the murmur becomes inaudible with the development of pulmonary hypertension and the murmur may be confined to systole. This is sometimes called an atypical PDA. Signs of pulmonary hypertension like palpable pulsations in second left intercostal space with dullness on percussion and a loud P2 may be evident then. PDA with large left to right shunt will show pulmonary plethora, left ventricular type of cardiomegaly, prominent aortic shadow, enlarged main pulmonary artery and branch pulmonary arteries. Typical appearance of calcification of PDA in an XRHS PA view is inverted Y-shaped. The inverted Y-shape is a combined appearance of calcification of the aortic arch extending down to the pulmonary artery and PDA. PDA is essential for survival in certain cyanotic congenital heart diseases. When the pulmonary blood flow is very low, it serves to increase pulmonary blood flow. Such a PDA is known as obligatory PDA. Obligatory PDA should not be closed without repair of the cyanotic congenital heart disease. Echocardiogram showing PDA in a case of tetralogy of fallow on color Doppler imaging. This PDA is a compensatory mechanism to improve pulmonary flow in tetralogy of fallow. Color Doppler echo shows a high velocity multicolored jet into the pulmonary artery from the descending iota suggesting a PDA. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.